It's oh. oh. kind of wanting to wear some socks. <laughs> I'm in my sister's basement in Roscoe, Illinois, and was kind of wanting to wear some socks. Ironically, <laughs> there's a kid's sock on the table in front of me. I mean, I guess I could have worn a pair of socks I packed up last night, and I could have uh, picked, <laughs> put on a pair of socks. As I've talked about before, I'm fairly frugal. And I uh, didn't want to put a clean pair of socks <laughs> on my uh, dirty body. Not when I'm all packed up and all the laundry's done. So I'm going out, <laughs> going without my uh, socks this morning. <laughs> my feet are a little cold. I've <laughs> hurt myself a couple times as I <laughs> progressed around the basement. I read a text or a message I got from somebody uh, last night on a different social media platform saying, hey, thanks so much for your videos. How do you know if you're doing the right thing? And I was trying to sum that up uh, and come up with a good answer for it. And while I was doing it, I'd gone to the bathroom and I was turned off the bathroom light and was working my way back to the futon I sleep in uh, when I come visit my sister in her basement. And, you know, she's got a bunch of things. It's not a house I'm familiar with. I mean, I'm fairly familiar with, but it's not my home. So when it's dark and you're feeling your way through. And as I'm doing this, I go, you know, the one way I realize, the one way I know I'm doing the right thing is by faith. And I thought, <laughs> I kid you not. Hey, that's a perfect answer for this guy. Faith is how you know you're doing the right thing. And at that, you know, a moment later, I think <laughs> I'm feeling the futon behind me. I am, but I'm, o I'm only feeling the edge. And I go to sit down and I miss the futon entirely and I smack my back against something, <laughs> something hard, <laughs> land on my butt. I'm 56 years old. And I'm saying, I knew I hadn't really broken anything or damaged anything too much. But let me tell you, it hurt. <laughs> I thought it was kind of funny. Because <laughs> it was by faith that I was making my way through the room. And faith also shows me that I'm making the right decisions. Because you never really know. You always hope to make the right decisions. But you make your decisions based on uh, the information you have at that time and what you believe is right. And the rest is up to faith. <laughs> and I like to think God's got a funny sense of humor. <laughs> so he had me miss my futon and smack my back. <laughs> Hope I didn't bruise anything. <laughs> we don't know. I haven't examined myself. But good morning, good morning, good morning to you. My name is Ken Tracy. Good morning, Jimmy. Good morning, Josh Agrand. Thank you so much for the uh, uh, heart me you sent me, Stacy. I appreciate that and good morning. What else do we have on Jax and Lisa and Not Original and Crazy and Evan? Again, my name's Ken Tracy, and this is Coffee with Ken. It is uh, Friday morning. It's November 15th. It's about 6.15 a.m. Happy Friday. It's a show I've been doing for quite some time. Good morning, Kim Williams. It's a show about me talking neck sore. <laughs> it's not a good thing. Got a big day today. Not even going to go into how big it is in a lot of ways. Don't want a sore neck starting my day. 
Things happen for a reason. Aw, Alexandra Hope, thank you for sending the heart, man. Again, my name's Ken Tracy, and this is Coffee with Ken. This is a show I've been doing for a long, long time. It was a show that was kind of hard for me to do today. Uh, but I've done the show for about five and a half years, and I share some stuff, and I talk about some things, and I uh, tell you a little bit about life, uh, the lessons I learned as I fall and miss the futon or stub my toe or, you know, even the, uh, the nice lessons as well, the tears I feel when I uh, see my daughter graduate in high school and being so proud or uh, my babies walking around and talking and to share a little bit about life. Um, but for those that have been watching a while, you n know it is not just a show about me talking. Hello, Sherry. And Rowena, thank you so much for following the live creator. For those that have been watching a while, you know it's also a show about me sharing my love of coffee. And with that in mind, I have a nice hot, I guess it's a tumbler. I guess it's a tumbler. The biggest thing that bumps me out about this, and I apologize if Will Bill Chill is watching from Texas, who was so kind to make this tumbler for me and send it to me when I was working in Yellowstone this summer. Take no offense, Will Bill, but my only issue with it is I don't know what to call it. So when I introduce it, like I am at this moment, I don't know what to call it. But we'll just call it a tumbler. I'd prefer to say a nice hot cup of coffee in front of me. It's a jug. It, Mosey says it's a tumbler. I appreciate your guys' input. It's certainly not a jug. Canister? Yeah, I mean... But I don't want to call it a nice hot canister of coffee. Thermos. Thermos kind of works, but it's metal. You can hear it. I think Mosey says it's a tumbler, and I think that's what it might be officially called. But either way, <laughs> what we call it, and this is, as always, when I get sidetracked, we often learn great lessons from my... <laughs> sidetracking what do we call it isn't very important what it does what it provides what it is holding is what is important and this tumbler has some hot coffee in it and I am excited to have my first sip uh, and for me a relatively late hour on this Friday morning my hope is Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, you got a nice hot cup of coffee in front of you as well. Just us. Oh, <laughs> it is hot. It is hot. I felt a little guilty. I went upstairs. I uh, Move some stuff into my sister's house, and that's what I'm doing out here the last couple days. And uh, uh, I'd been staying at an extended stay for the previous three months or so, and moved some of the boxes I had laying around into my sister's house. And in one of the boxes was a coffee maker. And yesterday morning, she had a multiple compartment coffee maker where you didn't put the water in till the morning or else it'd start and you had a heater in the back. And honestly, I think it was a horrible design, a horrible design. And not only was it a horrible uh, design, it was also uh, uh, kind of broken. It wasn't working. The hot side didn't stay hot and the cold side stayed cold and uh, it didn't work right and if you poured the water in too early the water would run through and it wouldn't be strong enough and I, I drank the coffee yesterday in front of you and I said hey it doesn't taste very strong I blame my niece for making it but I don't think the niece was the problem it was the coffee maker 
But anyway, I was talking to my sister and my dad when my show got done, and we were talking about the coffee maker, and my dad's going, oh, it's all ready. Now just get yourself some and go put it in the microwave. I'm going, what? What? It's all done? And now I need to go and put my cup into the microwave? No, 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 no. This is not the way it's supposed to be. This is not the way it's supposed to be. And I told them the benefits of a simple Mr. Coffee Maker and uh, how I had one in the garage. And would it be okay if I went out and got it? I like to control things. I'm a guest in their house, but they have a coffee maker that required want to pour themselves a cup of coffee and then hurry over to the microwave to heat it up. And, uh, yeah. Well, user says I put my cup in the microwave before I pour my coffee. Yeah, but that's not out of necessity. That's just a luxury, user. That is just a luxury to make sure my cup is piping hot. And by the way, I do that because when I pour it in the cup, I come over and I do my show, and sometimes I'll talk for an hour. And I won't give attention to the cup like I need or drink the coffee because I'm talking to you guys. The sacrifices I make for you guys and this show is amazing. But I do it out of love, out of love. And maybe repetition or habit. Maybe because it makes me laugh, smile. Maybe because I get somewhat financially rewarded for doing it. I had to really talk myself into doing the show this morning because I woke and remember I fell and hurt myself on the futon. I got back to sleep and it's six in the morning and I got a bunch to do today that I'm not feeling that confident about at the moment. Uh, but I'm working my way there. I'm working my way there. And I don't, I think if I would have skipped the show this morning and just went up and had a quiet cup of coffee, uh, and hung out, I would have felt something was missing. I would have felt something was missing and I wouldn't have rolled into my Two interviews that I have, one at 11.30 and one at 2 o'clock. Uh, with amazing confidence that I like to bring to the table. Good morning, Sandra Lynn. Uh, Lisa Smith where, said, where is my purple Yeti? Well, it's upstairs on the counter. I chose to use this. And this will keep my coffee hot for hours as well, Lisa Smith. And that is why I am using this, because it keeps my coffee hot, plus it has my logo. Before I hit the road today, I'll probably fill up the Purple Yeti with a cup of coffee, take it on the road. I live uh, in Naperville, Illinois, which is about 90 miles-ish from where I'm at here, an hour and a half drive. It's kind of a nice drive, kind of an easy drive. My car, which is new. Almost drives itself. By the way, quick story about my car. My dad is, I mean, all Tracys are a little unusual. But when my dad is ready to go, he is really ready to go. And we went and got his oil changed in his car yesterday. And he had a 1030 appointment. And I went to Starbucks and said I'd be back at 945. And as I'm pulling up to the driveway, it's like 944, and my dad's backing out of the garage. I wasn't even home yet. I went, wow. I go, I, so I get out of my car, and I go up, and I go, Dad, are you in a big rush? We're, I'm right on time. We're early, you know? We're going to get there early. He goes, oh, no, just get in my car. I go, because, you know, I kind of want to go to the bathroom. Is that okay? So I go in, <laughs> go to the bathroom, come on out, get into his car. 
go to the Lexus dealer in Rockford and get his oil changed. Come on home, start feeling a little sleepy, take a little bit of a nap. Go about my day. Start watching. My dad loves Fox News. He loves Fox News. Oh my gosh. But anyway, and uh, it's his house and I... If I'm going to watch one show on Fox News, it'd probably be The Five, because, I don't know, it's interesting. There's five people around the table, and they kind of discuss things with a serious right-wing slant. I know it. Oh, yeah. But either way, I watch it. And uh, my dad had to go off and pick up my niece, and then I hear a knock on the front door, and it's my dad. And he goes, Ken, I think your lights are on. They were. I shut them off. I think your car's actually still running. And this, at this point, it's 4.15 in the afternoon. Last time I'd been in my car, because if you remember back of the start today, or of this story, that I'd returned home from Starbucks at 9.45 a.m. Got out of my car in a rush, because my dad was backing up. Didn't take out, turn off the car, or take out the keys and went about my day and spent six hours plus with a car idling in the front uh, or in the driveway, in the front, you know, in the driveway. Fortunately, I had gotten a full tank of gas. Pleased to know no horrible things happen, or re pleased to report that nothing horrible happened to the car. Only a little bit of the tank was gone. And that the engine purrs very quietly and one doesn't notice that the car is still running. When they come home, when they get in and out of the driveway, when they go about their whole day and leave the car running for uh, uh, six hours. Good morning, Lewis Digital. Sean, I'm doing great. I am doing great. I am doing great. I'm working my way uh, forward and uh, started a little rough this morning and uh, feeling better right now. So I'm going to have another sip. Oh. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. It's a Sumatra coffee today. It's a Sumatra. My sister has her coffee she likes. But again, I didn't only bring a coffee maker. I brought the goods, grounds of coffee, different bags. She's skeptical of the pumpkin spice, so I didn't inquire too much as far as that goes. And uh, um, she'd made, she shops at, I think, Costco and had a Costco dark roast. And I go, hey, would it be all right? She's my little sister, so I feel I get to, you know, influence a little bit and uh, ask her if it would be all right if I replaced the grounds of the Costco dark roast, roast with the treasured Sumatra I now had in her cabinet. And she said, yes, no problem. And that's what I've done. And that is what I'm drinking this morning. Oh, somebody asked what sort of job interviews. <clears throat> job interviews that could move me forward, uh, could advance me in life. I had somebody comment. I posted a picture on Facebook of a house that just came on the market. I like doing that. I like talking about real estate, but I didn't like being a realtor. But whenever I do it, I have people say, oh, why'd you leave real estate? You should still be a realtor. And uh, there's a little dog that made a sad sounding <laughs> yelp upstairs. And uh, what was I going to say? Oh, somebody said, oh, I think you should still be in real estate. And I get that a lot because people like, to, by the way, and here's something I'm working on. Here's something I am working on. 
if you're ever going to start a sentence with you should, stop the sentence. Stop it. Stop the sentence. Yeah. Because nobody wants to hear what they should do in somebody else's opinion unless they happen to be asking for advice. It's invasive. It's not really helpful. It's kind of insulting even. It is. Because they're acting like they know better. As if they walked in your uh, steps and like you haven't thought about it. Believe me. I, we, we all live here. We think about this. We think about what's best for this. Because this is us. And we consider things. And we mull ideas. And we think about all sorts of things. Uh, somebody said that's also true. Also, I would. At least I would is saying what you would do. Not what I should do. So anyway, I had somebody, as they often do, say, you should get back into real estate. And I'm going, oh, should I? <laughs> should I? Oh, okay. <laughs> you <laughs> said I should. So I, oh, okay, I'm going to go take the license again. Go apply, go market myself, do the cards, do a job that I didn't like and wasn't even that financially rewarding because somebody on Facebook said I should do it. <laughs> and I just think it's funny, and I really like this person. But instead of saying that, instead of saying that, I said... I make more money doing what I'm doing now and enjoy it. And it's true. And it felt so good. Because I didn't have to go and explain. I didn't. I, that, not that they need or deserve or I owe an explanation as to why I shouldn't follow their idea. But the answer made me feel really good because I make more money doing what I'm doing now, which is waiting tables and content creation, and I enjoy it. And that felt really good to realize that. And I get a ton of people suggesting all sorts of things. And I get frustrated by it. Because I put myself out there and I do my little show and I don't, uh, I uh, uh, kind of put myself out there. But it doesn't mean that you know how I feel or what I should or shouldn't do and, or what any, I know what you should or shouldn't do. And uh, just thought it was kind of funny. But what I should do is have another sip of coffee. Oh, and let me tell you, that was a good decision. I hear my sister walking around upstairs. I think I hear her talking to my dad. They've got a nice little dynamic. I have, I'm me. It's a fairly large... Uh, personality. My dad likes doing his thing. My sister likes doing her thing. I think they enjoy having me here, but uh, certainly would change the dynamic. Certainly would change the dynamic. And uh, maybe it's okay if I sit down here and don't go up there because I feel they need me. Because honestly, that's my thought. I feel like, oh, I should go up there and give them the attention that they deserve. <laughs> Maybe they don't even want the attention. Maybe they're perfectly happy going through their this six o'clock hour without me. It's a hard pill for me to swallow. 
it is a hard pill for me to swallow. But it's also super liberating. I say funny things a lot and make people laugh and smile and feel good a lot. I do. But sometimes I feel I have pressure to always say thing or always be funny or always say the greatest words of wisdom. That's not my responsibility either. And I'm sure my dad and my sister can be just fine <laughs> without me this morning, for a little bit at least. Good morning, Kelly R. Oh, oh. <laughs> but I will tell on myself. I went up there. And I started the coffee maker. And it's actually my coffee and my, I mean, although I'm giving it to him, so it's no longer my coffee maker or my coffee. And, uh, because I don't need it right now. Uh, but the pot was only about half full and it was still percolating. <laughs> I looked around to see if my buddy Dirk, because my buddy Dirk scolds me for doing this would see me pour out of the pot the bottom half of the brew of the cup uh, into my mug. So it's probably pretty strong. And I've thrown off that pot of coffee. And I hope they're enjoying it. Hey, Carolyn! Uh, she can't even hear me. I was feeling guilty. I was feeling guilty. And no, 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 no. There was still some of the dark grounds. Or not grounds, dark stuff at the bottom. I think I drank the middle section out of the coffee. And if you think about it, the middle section is really kind of the norm. Because you got the really dark stuff on the bottom and the lighter stuff on top. So when one <laughs> drinks the middle section out, <laughs> my hope is that the dark stuff on the bottom and the lighter stuff on the top kind of merged together as they swished around. <laughs> so maybe I did them a service. <laughs> Tell you what, I'm drinking some good coffee. I am drinking some good coffee. Mm. So I packed up last night, uh, got the things I need to get, um, need to leave here by nine o'clock, got to stop at Walmart on the way home and pick up a thing or two more for my little adventure I'm going on. I've decided what I'm going to wear for the drive and I'm not going to wear my, uh, button down white shirt that's hanging in the, uh, bathroom right now that I just bought the other day that hopefully the wrinkles are coming out of, uh, cause I don't know. I want to feel like it's a fresh look when I walk in. And uh, got the coat I'm going to wear. Most of you have seen me in various coats. You've probably seen me in a, a black leather coat that I ride my scooter on. And uh, a light, uh, lighter coat, uh, North Face coat that's also black that I uh, wear a lot because it's comfortable. And... <laughs> um, I could iron it, but I'm not going to because <laughs> I've got it all figured out. I'm going to take a shower, going to shave my face and shave my head and let some of the water drip on it a little bit and steam on it. Then I'm going to bring it out <laughs> into my car, hang it on one of those car handles and drive an hour and a half, feeling confident that it will be just the right dryness when I get back to uh, uh, Naperville and switch out of the t-shirt I'm wearing. <laughs> Put on the shirt. Don't know if I'm gonna go one button or two buttons unbuttoned at the top. Either way, I think I'm gonna look great. And I am um, gonna put on a different coat. I think it's called like a P coat, P-E-A or something like that. It might be P-E-E -E coat. And it's kind of a mid-length coat, goes down to I don't know, I'm not standing up. It goes down to maybe here. And it's deep, dark blue. 
it's a nice looking coat and it looks professional and uh kind of just what I want to uh uh project I think is a guy walking in for two interviews that he's very qualified for where am I going I'm going back to Naperville I am going back to Naperville Am I mad at God for taking my hair? Not even slightly. Not even slightly. I've done long interviews. Interviews. <laughs> I've done long videos about this very subject. How I wouldn't even want hair back if God said, Ken, do you want your hair back? I don't think I would. I don't think I would. I'm looking forward to going in and shaving my face and shaving my head and uh, feeling clean and smooth and ready for my day. Yeah. And I'm excited about my day. And I'm looking forward to it. And I got a big day because not only do I have to stop at Walmart when I leave here and pick up a couple things, not only do I have to drive 90 miles, not only only I have two very close business establishments setting up interviews with just about the perfect amount of time between them and they picked the times so it worked out really nicely and when I'm done with that I've got some more things to take care of and then I'm going to watch a basketball uh, game tonight. I was invited to watch the uh, DePaul Blue Demons take on the Duquesne Dukes in a game of basketball tonight in Chicago. And I'm going to drive down and I'm going to uh, cheer. I'm excited about it. Meet some people and uh, uh, have a nice time. And uh, I am looking uh, forward to it and I'm looking forward to my day and uh, I'm feeling good and I had a great 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 night's sleep uh, yeah I'm gonna have one more sip of coffee oh it's still really hot I do want to go up and see how my sister's enjoying her coffee. Hopefully she's still in the kitchen when I get up there, and hopefully she's in love with the Sumatra. Because <laughs> I love the Sumatra. And I hope you are loving your coffee as well. Uh, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. And I hope your week is going well. And I hope you had a uh, uh, great night's sleep. And that you are uh, feeling good and that you're loving yourself and that you are forgiving yourself. And as always, I hope to talk to you soon. Bye-bye.